In podcast episode 51, I talked to Hendrik Riel about plantar heel pain. Hendrik is a physiotherapist from Denmark and has obtained his PhD in the management of plantar heel pain. He's doing a postdoc fellowship at the University of Aalborg and he's an assistant professor at the physio department of the University of Northern Denmark. We started off by talking about terminology. Henrik suggests to call the condition plantar heel pain because we don't necessarily know which structures are involved that produce pain in a patient's heel. In research, ultrasound scans can confirm a thickening of the plantar fascia, in which case it is fair to call the condition plantar fasciopathy. Henrik then mentioned that fascia and tendons share a lot of commonalities like tissue fibers and the changes that happen in case of pathology, but that they are different in their attachments. Fascia connects bone to bone and tendons connect muscles to bone. We then moved on to talk about phenotypes of patients that often have plantar heel pain. Henrik mentioned that one phenotype is runners who have a large running volume and that 8% of all running injuries are plantar heel pain. The other phenotype are middle-aged females who are often obese or overweight. When looking at risk factors for the development of plantar heel pain, a systematic review from the year 2016 suggests that a high BMI is the only consistent risk factor in the non-athletic population. The evidence is inconclusive on limited ankle range of motion or abnormal foot posture. In runners, the more you run and the more years you've been active, running in spikes and a high foot arch seem to be risk factors. When it comes to diagnosing plantar heel pain, signs and symptoms to look out for are first step pain in the morning or after prolonged sitting and decreasing pain after walking. Pain usually increases again at the end of the day when patients were active quite a bit. This pain is localized at the insertion of the plantar fascia under the heel at the calcaneus, can be provoked by palpation and sometimes extends distally. Competing diagnoses that we have to take into account are tarsal tunnel, Baxter's neuropathy, and fat pad related issues. Henrik then went on to explain that the presence of a heel spur doesn't change prognosis or management, but that we need to explain this to patients. Surprisingly, the prognosis for patients with plantar heel pain is pretty sobering, with only 40% being pain-free after two years despite good treatment. However, this might also be due to the fact that the patients who are included in research have had the condition for at least three months. So patients with acute plantar heel pain who often recover quickly are not included in scientific studies. So what are positive prognostic factors for recovery? Research shows that male gender, being older than 40, a symptom duration of less than seven months, and unilateral pain are positive prognostic factors for recovery. On the other hand, BMI and ankle range of motion do not seem to be prognostic factors. While research showed that isometric strengthening exercises might be able to decrease pain in patellar tendinopathy, this does not seem to be the case for plantar heel pain based on Hendrick's study. A practice guideline published in 2021 by Morrissey proposed a stepwise approach for treatment and also shows that there seem to be several effective treatments for plantar heel pain. Management would start with patient education, a foot orthosis or taping to control the pain, stretching and heavy low resistance exercises such as calf raises with the empty piece on a rolled up towel are evidence-based options in the next step. If those options do not work, we could move on to shockwave and or corticosteroid injections. At last, we talked about plyometrics and stretch shortened cycle exercises. Henrik explained that activities like running can be continued as long as they do not aggravate the pain further beyond 24 hours after running. If this is the case, other activities like swimming or cycling can be done to keep the same level of conditioning. At the moment, there is no research available on plyometrics for plantar heel pain but according to Henrik, it should be used as a last step before return to sport to prepare the athlete for the demands of his or her sport.
All right, so this was a brief summary of podcast episode 51 with Henrik Riel from Denmark. I hope I could raise your curiosity to listen to the whole episode and to learn more about plantar heel pain. If you would like to have more resources on this episode, head to our website physiotutors.com where you can download the transcript and infographic. As always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye.